Motor studies have this fascinating ability to not only look at the actual motor nerve, but also neuromuscular junction transmission. The way this occurs is because when the signal goes across the axon, which is an electrical signal, it's then transformed into a chemical release at the end of the nerve at the boot-on using acetylcholine. Now normally more acetylcholine is released than is strictly necessary, and that way we can ensure that the muscle will contract at the end of it. If we do this repetitively, the um, chemical stores of acetylcholine will naturally deplete, but because we have more acetylcholine being released than strictly necessary, this usually doesn't make a difference. If, however, we uh, block up the receptors of acetylcholine, for example, at the other end of it, which is what happens in myasthenia, then if we have depleting stores of acetylcholine being released, then there are less of it going across and the safety factor reduces and the amount of muscle fibers being activated will ultimately decrease. So if we do repetitive nerve stimulation where we repetitively activate the APB muscle, for example, uh, to contract, then the amount of contraction will decrease and one gets a natural dip down in the motor amplitudes that we record from the muscle. This then gradually picks up as secondary stores of acetylcholine then move to the front of the uh, terminal bouton to replace uh, what has been uh, depleted and the cycle can continue forward. And therefore, we have a very characteristic curve of uh, decrement when there is significant amounts of disruption of acetylcholine receptors being plastered with antibody. So that's another way in which we can exploit the properties of neuromuscular um, excitation in neurophysiology studies to make a diagnosis.